Amen. Why don't we stand tonight and give God praise tonight? Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise here tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did last night. And we're going to expect greater things tonight. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many enjoyed youth conference last night? Hallelujah. Amen. Thankful for what God did. Hallelujah. And we're believing for greater things. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. I want to, I got a question. I know it sounds kind of weird, but did anybody bring their alabaster box here tonight? Did anybody come prepared to give God praise? Amen. Isn't he worthy of, it, of our highest praise? Amen. Did somebody come to get loud here tonight? Why don't you just get loud right now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you worthy. Worship God. You're worthy of our highest praise. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. If we come, we give God praise. Why don't we all just kind of gather in the front? If you're able to gather at the front, I mean, let's just give God praise tonight. This is expecting greater things. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, 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 Jesus. We're going to continue on our worship, getting it ready, prepared, preparing the atmosphere for God to move in this place tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't we all just lift our hands and lift our voice right now as the praise team gets ready to get ready to pray and worship God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for what you did last night. God, I put on my garment of praise. Oh, I give you my highest praise. Lord, move in this service. Move in, your, in this service. Move with your spirit. Move with your power, oh God. Let the Holy Ghost move. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in Jesus' name.
No matter what my circumstance, you're good. Oh, God. I will choose to honor. I will choose to worship. No matter what my circumstance, you're good. Sing it again. I will choose to bless you.
my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends, burden and bitterness. You can just keep moving on. You're not welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. He picked me up, he turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the Savior. Cause he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the master, I thank the Savior, I thank God, he picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground, I thank the master, I thank the Savior, my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I thank the master, I thank the Savior, I thank God, help us another word, I am free, I am free. Another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one, I am free, I am free, I am free. Hell lost another one. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up, get up out of that grave. Now lost another one. I am free. I am free.
Oh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're continuing on our worship and our giving tonight. Hallelujah. And brother, sister Mason are going to play and sing for us. Amen. We're so thankful to have everybody here tonight again for Forward Conference 2023. Didn't, I mean, like I said, last night that sermon really ministered to me personally. If it didn't minister to anybody else, it ministered to me. Amen, amen, amen. I believe it ministered to some older folks too. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to go before the Lord in prayer for the tithes and offering. We can all just lift up our voice one more time. Lord Jesus, we thank you, God. Oh, to have your name applied to our life, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, for the presence that's here tonight. Oh, we thank you, Lord, to be able to come together and worship you freely, God, in your house. I pray you bless this offering, multiply to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name, you come, bring your tithes and your offering, and worship with the masons today. Come and worship, uh, sing for us tonight.
for being here at Forward Conference 2023. Amen. We are excited about what God has already done. Excited about what God is going to do. Amen. 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 It's, it's so good to see each and every one of you that are here. Thank you so much for coming. Amen. Amen. I want to uh, give special thanks to Brother Alex, Sister Grace, for helping us out. Amen, amen. Uh, they, uh, well, they're just, they're just part of us, just an extension of. Amen, amen. We claim them. Amen. Uh, just uh, uh, so wonderful. And uh, I am so thankful uh, for the opportunity that Sister Felicia and I have of being the youth pastors of the Pentecostal Church. Amen. It has been uh, just a, a whirlwind. And we were talking before service. Uh, 2012 is, uh, is when, when I took over as youth pastor. And then, of course, Sister Felicia and I were married in 2013. So uh, she has been, and she, is, she was part of the, the youth ministry before we got married. Uh, we... Uh, uh, she has been by my side basically since day one. And, uh, of course, uh, everyone at the church that, is, that has jumped in and helped, uh, thank you so much. But it is such an honor, such an honor uh, to, to be here and to do this. I give honor to my pastor. He's not here. He is uh, shepherding uh, a, a, a sheep that needs, that needs some shepherding tonight. Amen, amen. A family in our church uh, uh, suffered a loss earlier today. And, uh, and uh, anyway, more details on that later in the weekend. But um, uh, so he is, he is being a shepherd tonight. He's being a pastor tonight, even though he's not in the church building. Uh, so, but I would give honor to him uh, uh, tonight uh, because uh, without, uh, without a pastor, uh, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Um, and uh, this wouldn't be possible without a pastor that has a vision uh, because uh, I have a man of God in my life that has a vision uh, for this church, for this city, for this group. Amen, amen. So, uh, and, uh, amen. So because of that, uh, this is possible. So thank you all for being a part and uh, thank you so much uh, for all that you have done. With that said, uh, oh my goodness, uh, did Brother Moorhead minister to us last night? Hey Amen. I, I know, uh, you know, of course, you know, we, we always, always say, well, it's not the, not the man that, that you know, brings, the, brings revival and all that stuff. But I, I tell you, the, the greatest compliment that, that I can honestly think of to give to any minister is that they were a willing vessel. 
That's the, that's the most honest and greatest compliment that I can give because God, of course, is responsible for all the, all the other stuff. God is responsible for all whatever happens and all that stuff. God, God gets all the glory for that, but I'm thankful for willing vessels. And last night, Brother Moorhead brought the word, and uh, it was a timely word that we needed. And I believe that tonight's going to be no different. Amen. So, uh, Brother Moorhead, come on. Feel your liberty in the house tonight. Let's all worship the Lord as he comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Oh, come on now. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I am so grateful to be here. I want to tell you what. I had a last night. Was it RJ's? Hometown Roots. I, I don't know. I don't know how I came up with that. But I want to tell you what. The chicken fried steak was bigger than my plate. It was amazing. And then today I had a piece of chocolate meringue pie that I promise you was six inches off the, the plate. It was just wonderful. Pastor took me and we drove down the roads, the back roads of Kentucky and had a good time. And I'm grateful to be at a youth event. And I made a promise to myself, a covenant with the Lord. And I know this is going to sound really silly, but I made a promise that I would always preach to my audience. Uh, that may not make a whole lot of sense, but if it was a youth audience, I'm going to preach to the youth audience. If it's a children, I'm going to preach children. If it's adults, I'm going to focus on the adults. And so, I am so grateful to have all of our adults that are here. And can I give you kudos last night for backing up the young people? That was incredible. And so you're going to be blessed too. But we're, we're focusing on the adults. And then in the morning, I'm going to act like a crazy preacher and I'm going to preach to the adults, okay? And, uh, and the young people are still going to be blessed. So um, there's a scripture that is the favorite of many old-time apostolics, and it's this. I was mad when they said to me, make me go to the house of the Lord. My favorite scripture is, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And so it is my belief that we should have fun in God's house. And so we're going to have a good time today. Before we get too excited here, let me ask a question. I'm from Battle Creek, Michigan. You may or may not know cereal was created in Battle Creek, Michigan. It's the cereal city of the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Post and Kellogg's were both founded, and they're both headquartered in Battle Creek, Michigan. And once a year, we have the world's longest breakfast table on Michigan Avenue. They shut it down, and it's about 13 miles long, table to table. And you can just walk, and we walk about a mile. People are already making uh, vacation plans for next year. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, what's your favorite cereal? Anybody in here, help me out. Your favorite cereal. We'll talk about that in a minute. Anybody else? Yes. Cheerios. Okay, anybody? Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. Lucky Charms. Captain Crunch. Fruity, who said Fruity Pebbles? Come on there. There you go. Oh, just own that, though. You know, own that. Hey, I can do some Fruity Pebbles. I, have, I am man enough to admit that. I am happy about that. Anybody else? Reese Paws. Frosted Flakes. Apple Jacks. Man, I'm feeling the spirit moving all over this house. Okay, on the count of three, yell out your very, very favorite one, two, three. Okay, I like all of those as well. Truth is, 
Unless it's gluten free, there's not one that I don't like. I mean, I want you to put all the gluten in there, put all the extra sugar in there. Now, my question is, do you put the cereal in first or do you put in the milk? I, I, I'm aware that that's an odd question. And Brother Andrew, I am a psychopath in many ways. So when I, what happens, you got to understand, my favorite food group is cereal. And I start by putting the milk Then the next thing that is very, very essential in my morning delicacy. Is to take a bottle of Hershey chocolate. Ellie, you made my, my day when I walked in. You said, you asked her mama who was preaching tonight, and then she said, I couldn't hardly even color last night because he was too interesting to even color. I said, well, you won't be able to color at all tonight. <laughs> and so then, I'm looking for her. Where's she at? There she is. You get a spoon. A spoon. I asked for a spoon. And she came out of the kitchen. Out of the coffee shop with a spatula. She said, I'll go get you another one. I said, no, I'll get somebody else. Her mom went and got me a spoon. Her mom said she can handle the job. So you then you stir it up real good. Oh, hallelujah. I, I feel the spirit moving. Don't you just feel that in the house? Oh, whoo. Okay, and you just stir it up. Okay, we got to get a good consistency going on here. Okay, all right. All right. Mm, hallelujah. Ellie, I don't remember. What was your favorite cereal? Huh? Cocoa Puffs. My favorite cereal in all of the world. is Cocoa Puffs. So first, what happens here is we get chocolate milk in the bowl. And then we get our bag. Brother Andrew, you're going to have to come up here and help me real quick. You open that bag up real quick. I knew he was getting ready to pull out a... Oh, dear Lord. I just want you all to all know the preacher did not do that. I try to stay in good graces with the pastor's wife, but that, that wasn't me. I promise that was your son. And I'm really glad you were here to witness it because I would have been blamed for it. And then there's the moment. Oh, oh, oh I love it. I just sit down. Make sure it's all right. And then, you're right, it's a mess, buddy. That's my life, it's a mess. 
Drum roll, please. Oh, my word. Woo! Mm, say what? Mm. That right there, as we say down in the south, because I'm actually from Arkansas, and I mean no disrespect at all, that make you want to slap your mama. Woo! I'm telling you what, I'm going to have a sugar high for a week. I already had a whole piece of pie today. Oh, man, I'm telling you what. I was on a Zoom call with a bunch of preachers the other night, and they said, it's an hour and a half Zoom call we do once a month. And he said, Brother Moorhead, what are you eating? Because I had a cup. I was just sitting there. I said, cereal. <laughs> they said, it's 9 o'clock at night. I said, I know. <laughs> it's great. And I, I, I'm going to tell you how, how bad this addiction has even gotten. If I don't have chocolate milk, because I ran out of milk and didn't have any chocolate that night. But I, I, I had some caramel macchiato iced coffee that was in the refrigerator, so I just used that and then put in my, oh, my, woo, at it. I was preaching this at a camp once in Ohio, and I talked the night before about my ADHD, and after service, the nurse came up, and she said, Brother Moorhead, I'm now convinced. I don't think you have ADHD. You have S-U-G-A-R. <laughs> but because I have ADHD or S-U-G-A-R or L-A-Z-Y or whatever it is I've got, you'll get it here in a minute. That moment after I make that perfect breakfast, something happens. And that Oh, because I make a big bowl, I get sidetracked. I come away from my breakfast, phone rings, have to go mow the yard, have to go s solve the world's problems. My daughter has a another crisis. Something happens, so I get pulled away. And when I get pulled away, there's two things that happen every time. It's really frustrating because I have put in a lot of work in making this. Can anybody see one of the problems that's already started to happen? It, it gets soggy. That's one of the two. What's the other one? Can, chocolate cinnamon. Okay, chocolate settles, chocolate cinnamon. Food, chocolate, let's go eat, give the altar call, we're hungry. I, I understand. I get it. Somebody said, Brother Moorhead, you preached five nights in a row, and every single illustration had something to do with food. Well, of course. So anyway, look, it gets soggy, and the chocolate begins to settle at the bottom. This is one of my favorite meals in the whole world. I love this. I can do this. Oh, I love this. But what has to happen is, here's what the Word of God says. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thy stir up the gift that is within me. I put in remembrance that I stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Paul, the older minister, is talking to the younger minister and he is saying, here's the thing I need you to know. There is good things inside of you. I know in this generation we hear all the bad stuff and it's those bad kids and those that lazy generation and that mixed up generation, that crazy generation. 
and I love every one of you, but you are. But also in the middle of all that, you are an amazing generation. You are the most intelligent on paper. You're the most intelligent generation that's ever existed. You're the most creative generation that's ever existed. You're the most well-connected, the most charisma-filled generation that's ever walked the earth. We got to fix some of the other stuff. But there is good things in you. Paul's telling Timothy, I hope I'm not as old as Paul, but let me fill that role as Paul for a minute. Let me tell the young people in the house, there's good things in you. There's good days ahead. You can do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or even think according to the riches. Woo! Wherefore I put in remembrance, I've just come to remind somebody there's good stuff in you. Point that you say, say there's good stuff in me. Say there's good stuff in me. I don't care what your teacher said, your parents said, your spouse said, a leader said. I need you to hear me today. There is good stuff in you. Stir up the gift of God. It didn't come from you. Hey, I believe in pastoral authority with everything in me. But the pastor can't give you a gift. I believe in being submitted to your parents, but your parents can't give you a gift. I believe in being in the body of Christ, but the body of Christ can't give you the gift. The gift comes from God. And if God be for me, if God anoint me, if God puts me on a path, nobody can take it away from me. And every once in a while, I got to be reminded, I got some good stuff in me. It's just settled a little bit. I got to get back in the prayer room and start to pray again. I got to get in the Word of God and read it again. I got to get with some people of God so I can feel it again. Stir up the gift that is within you. Go back to that scripture, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. Now listen, you have to have the gift, and it comes from God, but it's going to get transferred to you through men, through the body, through people, through flesh. It comes from God. It's going to be activated by the body. That's why you got to be a part of the body. Okay, let's stir it up. Our first point here, S. You're awesome, by the way. I told you privately. I want to tell you publicly. You're amazing. I know I'm hard to follow. I was preaching. I was preaching at camp in Colorado. If you notice, I mean, don't worry, I study, I prepare, I have notes, but the notes are on the screen, okay? That way I can be ADHD and talk to you, okay? And I was taking too long between slides, and the lady up there noticed I had 38 slides. I've been preaching 30 minutes, and I was on slide four. I looked up, the slide had changed. About 30 seconds later, it changed again. And the rest of the week, she just started pushing me. She's like, you're taking too long. I'm helping you out, preacher. (laughs) You're really good. Find me, but don't speed me up. You're awesome. Number one, if you want to stir it up, you got to stay connected. You have to stay connected. I'm going to preach about this tomorrow, but we got to stay in the vine. We got to stay in the house. Can I tell, uh, are there any elders in here? Who's had the Holy Ghost over 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, over 50 years, over 60 years? Okay, 50 it is. 
Have you ever had a dry spell in your Christianity? What? Over 50 years? Really? You mean it's not just all glory all the time? No. You see, there's some dry spells that come in. And the way you get through a dry spell is you stay connected. There's times I've read the Word of God. It, it's so weird. Read, I try my best to read through the Word of God every year. And there's some time, and I, I hear people, every time I open the Word, I see something new. Woo! I'm grateful that you have that experience. I'm 47. I'm still kind of a young guy, but I'm kind of in, the, in between. I'm lost in between here. And my, my dad's a pastor. I was raised in the church. I got the Holy Ghost when I was seven, so I've had the Holy Ghost for 40 years. And I'm going to tell you, there are times, every time I open up the Word of God, I learn something new. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Where did he go? This is the same book I read yesterday. This is the same prayer closet I prayed in yesterday. This is the same church and the altar that I danced under the authority of the Holy Ghost last Sunday night. Where did he go? And you know what happens when you go through a dry spell? You stay connected. You open up the Bible the next day and you start to read. You open up the Bible the next day and you keep on reading. You get in the prayer closet and you keep on praying. About a year ago, I remember I was, I was preaching on a Sunday. And it, it was so dead. I was like, Lord, why is this church so dead? While I was preaching, I was talking to the Lord. And he said to me, boy, why are you so dead? <laughs> Ouch. He said, I know you travel all the time and you re-preach sermons all the time. Next time you come here, you preach a brand new sermon. Lord, I, I mean, I, I don't just walk out here on the flesh. I, and so there's a church I went to every month. So I was like, okay, I was thinking and praying. Man, I had nothing. The week before, I got sick as a dog. I said, okay, Lord, I'm sick. Surely you're going to give me a pass on this. And he didn't. And I remember I said, Lord... I don't know what's wrong, but the word, your word has been so dry to me. I still read it. I still pray it. I still speak it, but it's just been dry. I need life from your word. I took my hands and I prayed over the word. It was instantly. It was, this don't happen all the time, so please, please don't misunderstand me. It was like a teleprompter started creating bullet points for what I was supposed to preach on Sunday. And it was happening in my spirit. Instantly, his word was connected. But it was about a year where the word felt dry. Hey, you just have to stay in the house. Young person, you come to youth group even when you don't feel like it. You get in the prayer room. Everybody else is speaking in tongues, and you can't feel a thing. You pray anyway. You're getting modest, and you're trying to live for God, and everybody else is living like the world, and it doesn't make sense, and they're making fun of you. You just you, you get dressed for the Lord anyway, and you don't worry about what anybody's doing or what anybody's saying. And I, I, I don't know why I'm on this. Will you forgive me? I understand you have a Christian school, and this is a little bit different, but we're all in different situations at times where this will apply. My wife went to a, a public school, and she wanted to live holy, live right. She was called the dress lady. And she felt like she was uncool. She felt like she was weird, like she was odd, like she didn't fit in this world. 
You know how at the end of the year they do the yearbooks? And they have all of these sayings in the back of the yearbook. And they vote different things. Class clown. Most likely to succeed. You know what she was voted as? The coolest dresser. Her perception was she was weird. The school's perception was that girl's on a different level. What you think people are thinking of you and you think, oh, I'm just a Christian and I'm nobody loves me and everybody hates me and I guess I gotta eat some worms. The world is like, man, that young dude is sharp. He don't ever cuss. That must mean he has a really good vocabulary because none of them do. Wow, I have to stay connected. See, here's the thing. If Timothy wasn't in the house, Paul wouldn't have been able to put his hand on his head. And you may be struggling, and sometimes all you need is the man of God, the person of God to lay their hands on you. But if you're out in the car, if you're at the party, if you're down the road, there is no connection. Lord, Hey, I don't know what Sunday it is, but I'm just going to be faithful. And all of a sudden, the anointing's going to lay on me. All of a sudden, a calling's going to be imparted. All of a sudden, my number's going to be called. Okay. I have an hour and 30 minutes left, so we have to hurry. T, tools for recovery. I know we get beat up sometimes when we do go through these dry places. There's three things I want to give you for God and not give us a spirit of fear, but a power. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say power. power. Oh, man, I feel something right now. Somebody say power. Power, power is a Greek word, dunamis. It comes from our American word called dynamite. When I say power, I want somebody to say boo. Who was it? I got one. That's staying connected to the preacher up here. Power! He wants to put the power. In you to live right. Power! To walk right. Power! To talk right. Power! To preach and power. To teach and power to change your world but you got to stay connected he's going to give you some tools and the second thing you have to have is love this is a crazy world we're living in but you can still love you know I was at home my 8 year old came in the room she said daddy I don't feel good my stomach hurts real bad so I started doing the parent stuff. Have you ate too much? Were you running? Been acting crazy? You know, went down the list. She said, no, Dad, I was just laying in my bed reading a book. And it quickened in me. I said, baby, go bring me the book. She brought in the fourth grade reader. I said, read out loud the passage where you got sick. And it was where two girls were holding hands in a fourth grade reader. I said, baby, you were given the Holy Ghost a year ago. That is the power of the Holy Ghost. That's conviction within you. What happened is when you read that, a red flag went on in your spirit telling you that's not okay. And it began to squeeze. And one of two things is going to happen. You keep listening to that squeeze in your spirit. It'll it'll get stronger and stronger you ignore it it'll get weaker and it'll get weaker but at eight years old the conviction of the holy ghost moved on an eight-year-old girl while she was reading and said uh-uh that's not of me that's not of my word now we've told her you're going to be kind to everybody you're going to love everybody you're going to accept everybody but we also know what god's word says so we got out the word we started talking she's eight years old i know but god already talked to her so daddy needs to reconfirm some things within her it was during covid we were on a bike ride and 
And then at 12 years old, Rose said, we stopped and she said, Mom, Dad, it happened again. I'm reading this book and I didn't tell you because I really, really like the book, but that stuff is in there again. We started talking about it. It's that spirit that at eight years old, at 10 years old, you can have discernment in your spirit. You can feel, hey, you know what? This is not of God. I'm still going to treat everybody kind. I'm still going to be a light in this world. And can I tell you that she has a circle of friends that are confused about that lifestyle. And so she, she said, Dad, I have my very best friend. Is She's talking about her girlfriend, and I don't know what to do. And I said, well, I'm going to pray for you. So she came in the room, and she said, Dad, I wrote her a letter. And I need you to read it and make sure it's okay. And she said, you're my best friend. I love you. I just need you to know I'm not comfortable with you talking about your girlfriend around me. We can be best friends, but I need you to know I just don't want to hear about it. And this is just a boundary that I have. I'm reading this letter, and I'm like, ooh, that girl's smart. She gave it to her. She said, Dad, will you pray for me? Because I, I really, she was crying. I don't want to cause any trouble. I, I'm not trying to be mean. And I said, okay, baby, we, we prayed. And so a day later, I said, baby, what happened? What did she say? She said, Rose, I already knew you don't agree with that. She wasn't confused of what Rose, the apostolic skirt girl, believed. They already know what you believe. So when you don't enforce what you believe, you just do more to confuse them than anything else because they probably know what you stand for more than what you do. Again, we don't be mean. We're, we, we're not ugly. But we are going to stay connected to the Lord. We're going to stir that gift up that's within us. Okay, I have to hurry because Pastor walked in and I still have two hours left. And be of a sound mind. Our next slide. Inspect yourself if you want to start. See, can you tell the chocolate? It's going down again. Let me see here. So see what happened is I got a mixed bag there. The stuff on top, it's still fresh because it hasn't been sitting in the milk. But the stuff down at the bottom, it's getting soggy already. If we're not in the house of the Lord, if we're not in the word of the Lord, we're going to get soggy. We have to stay fresh. Inspect yourself. I don't normally eat while I preach, but it's Olivia's fault because last night she had this donut down here made me so hungry. I just decided to bring my own food tonight. Paul said, examine yourselves. I've talked about pastoral authority over and over tonight. I believe in pastoral authority. But if pastor's the only person examining you, you're not going to make it. If Pastor Andrew's the only person examining you, if your parent, uh, that's a story I was telling you about the eight-year-old girl, my daughter, where she was reading that book, and it was the Holy Ghost that spoke to her. She said, Daddy, something ain't right here because... Hey, she still messes up all the time, okay? Trust me, I can give you stories. But we're trying to teach her how to examine herself in the light of the Word of God that even at 8 years old, you can have a conviction. At 10 years old, you can have a conviction. At 12, you can be called into the ministry. At 15, you can teach a Bible study. If you are examining yourself in light of the word of the Lord, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Prove your own self. You don't have to wait for a parent to ground you. She said, Dad, she came after Christmas. She asked for a book. It was $25 on Amazon. She walked in, Dad, you need to send this book back. It's full of that stuff. I didn't read it. I didn't look through it. We didn't set up a tribunal. 
She just said, oh, there's something wrong with this. Dad, I, I got a funny feeling. Dad, I was on this YouTube channel, and I just got a funny feeling, and I just turned it off. You know what? It's got to come in from within. When you're on your device and something don't feel right, not a mama, not a daddy, not a teacher, but you, the teenager, have to say, you know what? This just isn't right. It's not right. I'm putting the phone away. I heard that sister pastor just preached, not, or spoke not too long ago, and said that we got to put aside the flesh. You know what happens when you start putting aside the flesh and you start fasting? That grip I was talking about earlier, it gets stronger. And you walk into a place and there's a joke going on. You're like, no, I, I, I can't do that. There's a video play and you say, you know what? I just don't feel comfortable watching this. I'm going to turn it off. I'm meddling tonight. I, I, that was not the goal. But I believe that we can have a generation that no matter what everybody else is saying, we can have a generation that will inspect ourselves and say, you know what, God, I am going to just submit to you. Yes, we must have pastors. We must have elders. We must have our youth pastors. We have to have a community of the body of Christ that helps to reinforce all of that. I believe that. But you're old enough. My daughter can get my phone. She can disable talk and text. She can set up networks. She can do all. If you're smart enough to change the whole network system of a city, you're smart enough to get in the word of God and find the answer to what is happening in your classroom. Can I tell you, you were not called. You were not created for a cell phone. You weren't created for an app. You weren't brought into this world for YouTube. You were not generated so that you can just take up space, but God has called you to change this world. Okay, I have to hurry. Whether you're going to find... <laughs> that was awesome. Great job. Great job. I, I, I was going to keep meddling, and she just went ahead and, and push me forward. Okay, we're going to do this fast because I, I still have three more hours to go. <laughs> Review every area of your life. I don't have to have leaders to do that. I can do that. Next. <laughs> She's serious about getting that restaurant. Repent of every sin. I'm sorry, God. Next. Make restitution. We talked about that last night. Fix it. Everybody say fix it. Receive God's forgiveness. Next, reveal your faults to a friend. You know what? I, I, I say this to people. If there's something going on your, in your life, I see that. That's good. That's awesome. <laughs> Tell someone, not everyone. You need somebody to confide in. That's biblical. That's okay. All right? Submit yourself one to another, not to Facebook. Oh, I know. I'm just letting that one sit for a little bit. I can feel the conviction from up here. Oh, you know what? I, I am personally involved in a situation where a leader went and talked about their family to everybody. Here's what the Bible, not, but here, here's an illustration I heard once. An incredible man of God, Anthony Mangan, said, when you have a piece of wood and you pull a nail, because the Bible says that Jesus is a nail in a sure place. When you pull a nail out of a piece of wood, two things happen. You bruise the wood and you bend the nail. And so what happened is this leader went and talked about his family to everybody that listened. And then three months later decided everything was okay. But he didn't go back and tell everybody else. And then said, you know what, we're going to put this person in a position now. But the damage has already been done. 
Was there healing done? Absolutely. But the problem, there was too much talking done. You and your pastor can fix a lot of stuff. You and the Lord can fix a lot of stuff. But if you put it on Facebook, the whole world knows, and they're not nearly as forgiven as your youth pastor. I cringe sometimes when I see confessions on Facebook. Oh, dear Jesus, I know the trouble getting ready to start. When I was pastor, I get text. Pastor, have you seen so and so's Facebook page today? I get sick to my stomach because I knew bad news was on the way. Lord, help me to speak to the right people. Okay, all right. <clears throat> that was good. I'm surprised she hasn't went to the next. We're almost done. Would you come so they think we're almost done? We're going to give them hope. I, I just want them to feel better. Okay, next. Repeat these steps regularly. Okay, we're going to go to the last one. Release. If you're going to stir up the gift. Pastor, I just want you to know I did not do this. There was an, a person in your family that did this. I'm not, I am not going to, I'm not going to say any names at all. I'm just, I'm just telling that right now. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith, prove your own self. Know not your own selves that Jesus Christ is in you. He wants to release you. I believe in this room, there is the power we're quite a ways past that moment but we got somebody in the back that called it bless the Lord it's already in you I know this is a different lesson today but it's already in you where's that couple at right there what song did you sing I see a victory. What did you end with? Famous for. The author of that song weighs about a hundred pounds soaking wet. And as a 13 year old kid, when I walked into the church, I said, when are you coming into the youth group? And he said, I'm already in the youth. He looked like he was five. Then I married his aunt. And I won't tell you what, the reason I don't have a lot of hair is because of the author of that song, Torn Wells. And if he was here, he would, he, he would raise his hand and he would own it. He would own it. But I would walk in. I get so irritated with that kid. Wednesdays would be up at the church and I say okay we're setting up for youth I couldn't find Torn but I would hear the piano Torn it's not practice time I need your help I know brother, Moore, brother David just one more second I said okay I need you to set up these chairs yes sir five minutes later I hear the piano hey I need you to clean out that room yes sir then I hear the piano and th then it would be like okay do not touch the piano until I release you to go touch the piano. <coughs> this is a true story. This happened. This is great. Because, you know, everything else I've said wasn't true. But this, this is a true story. We're almost done. We really are. We had a holiday youth convention in our city. And he was in charge of doing the music. And I wish I had the recording of this. I've heard the recording. I wish I had it with me. There was a call in the answering machine at the church when we still had physical answering machines at the church. And it said, Hello, church. If a leader could call me, this is Officer So-and-so with the Battle Creek Police Department. It's 1230, there's a noise complaint, loud music coming from your church. Beep. Hello, this is Officer So-and-So, it's 1.30, there's a, a noise complaint from your church. 
That's your cue. 2.30 in the morning, there's a noise complaint from your church. That it was full of noise complaints because that kid was on the piano with his group getting ready to go lead worship in front of some young people. There's been times that, hey, boy, you got to go stir it up. You got to stir it up. He, hey, he's wild. He's a little different than me. I love him. But, you know, he, he's got some of his own ideas, all that stuff. But I watched a teenager say, you know what? I'm going to stay connected to the people around you. I can already tell. I've been here. This worship team, you guys are amazing. This is great singers and bass players and worship singers. And oh my goodness, you guys are gifted. God has touched you. And you know what? We got some younger ones. That it won't be long. They're going to be doing the same thing. But you're going to have to stir up the gift. Now, I, I'm weird. I like to connect things. I, I want things to make sense in my brain. Whether it makes sense in your brain or not, that's okay. Here's how we're going to do this altar call. You're going to come up, and I have stir sticks. I did this one time, and so that it would flow easier what I had done. Thank you, Brother Andrew. What I had done is I put them all under the seats in a junior high camp. And the boys were hitting each other in the head while I was trying to preach. It didn't work out very well. crazy I get it we're done God's getting ready to do something here will you pray with me can we focus our minds together dear Heavenly Father I know what you're getting ready to do I, I, I know the impact that this can have your word says write the vision make it plain so he that runs can read it you're getting ready to make things plain for us tonight I want you to choose one thing in your spirit that you heard tonight. What's one thing that God is calling you to do? What's one thing you need to stir up? Something, a talent that has settled and you, you haven't been as disciplined as you need to be. What's one thing? I just want you to give me a thumbs up when you got it. What's one thing? We got four people that the Lord spoke to. Okay, a few more. I get it. Don't worry. You're not going to say it out. You're not going to say it out loud. I want you to come down. There's some Sharpie markers here. Do not give one to Brother Andrew because he's already made a mess enough. Please be careful. I don't want to replace any carpet. We don't... There's only about 12, so you're just going to write down. You're going to take the stick back to your place, and you're going to leave the Sharpie marker. And you're going to write down on your Sharpie marker one thing that you want to stir up in your life. What's one thing where you're going to make deeper consecration? You're going to be more focused. What's one thing? I'm going to pray one more time so you can get that in your brain. And then I'm going to release you, and I want you to come down. What's one thing? And I love what Brother Andrew said last night. I want you to put the date on there. I don't want you to forget it. I want you to take it home with you. Adults can do this. Kids can Whoever. It doesn't matter. We have enough. Dear God, we, we've had fun tonight. We've laughed. I have no doubt we've heard from you tonight. I pray you focus our spirit, God. Stir something within me, dear God. Stir something with each and every one that's before me. Stir it up, God. Stir it up, God. Stir prayer in me, God. Stir that talent that you put in me, God, I pray. I know I'm only 10 years old, but I know, God, I have watched the impact of 10 years. And there was a 10-year-old over in the altar.
altar, kids camp, and he was praying through people. He kept looking at me, giving me a thumbs up. They got the Holy Ghost. They got the Holy Ghost. That night he prayed about eight kids through. He was 10 years old. He was a camper himself. God wants to stir it up in you right now, tonight. Would you come? Would you come?
See you in the- 